So recall that our strategy was we had four equations and we had four constants, a, c, d, and f. And so we went to this trouble to add and subtract the functions themselves, the wave functions themselves, and the derivatives of the wave functions at the boundaries. And so now you can see that we have these four terms that we have here, the equations 1, 2, 3, and 4, where if we look at equations 1 and 4, we can see just on the left-hand side we have a plus f and a plus f on um, the left-hand side, and we have c on the right-hand side. And if we look at equations 3 and 2, we have a minus f on the left-hand side, and we have d on the right-hand side. So if we divide 4 by 1 and 3 by 2, then we should get rid of all of those constants. So let's do that. So let's start with equation 4 divided by equation 1. So equation 4 is a plus f alpha e to the negative alpha a divided by a plus f e to the negative alpha a. That's on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we get 2kc sine ka, and we divide that by 2c cos ka. Now let's look at equation 3 divided by equation 2. So equation 3 is a minus f alpha e to the negative alpha a, and I can divide that by a minus f e to the negative alpha a. That's on the left hand side. On the right hand side I have 2 kd cos ka and that's divided by negative 2 d sine ka. So now that I have those two things defined we can actually start canceling out terms. So looking back on equation 4 divided by equation 1 I have a minus f on the bottom and a minus f on top. I have an e to the negative alpha a on the bottom, e to the negative alpha a on top. On the right hand side, I have a 2 on top and a 2 on bottom, and I have a c on top and a c on the bottom. So the strategy here has worked out very effectively, where the simplification leaves me with alpha is equal to k times sine ka over cosine ka. And if we can simplify this further, we would then use this trig identity of sine x over cos x is equal to the tan of x. And I'm going to divide both sides by k. And so I'm going to be left with alpha over k is equal to the tangent of ka. Looking back over here now, where we've got... 3 divided by 2. Again, we have many simplifications where we can cancel out a minus f on top and bottom. e minus alpha a, e minus alpha a. So on the left-hand side, we're only left with alpha. On the right-hand side, I have 2's which cancel out, and I have the d's which cancel out, which again, very successful strategy in terms of getting rid of all of those constants. And so I'm left with now k cosine k a over sine ka, and I'll move the minus sign up to the top. And so again, I can employ a similar trig identity where I have the cosine of x over the sine of x. That's equal to the cotan of x. And if I divide both sides by alpha, then I'm left with alpha over k is equal to the negative cotan of ka. And so if you recall, this was exactly what I had said that we were going to be finding, where we basically would be coming up with these two relationships. This alpha over k is equal to tan ka, and it's also equal to the negative cotan of ka. There are no analytical solutions to these equations. So one way to get the energy of the bound states is to plot them. The solutions are governed by when tan ka is equal to alpha over k, and when negative cotan ka is equal to alpha over k. In this plot, the lines that represent tan Ka and negative cotan Ka are plotted along with two alpha over K lines. Energy levels are determined by when the alpha over K line meets the tan Ka or negative cotan Ka lines. 
as the height of the potential of the well decreases, meaning that the pit of the particle gets shallower, the alpha over k line shifts to the left, and predictably there are fewer bound states. However, no matter how small the potential well is, there will always be one bound state. Conversely, as the potential increases, meaning that the pit the particle is in gets deeper, then the alpha over k line shifts to the right, and there are more bound states, meaning there are more times that this alpha over k line crosses the tan ka or negative cotan ka lines. As the potential increases, eventually we will regain the particle in infinite square potential solutions.